back to the Chicago Tomahawk. I'm Mike, and I got my linemate Matt with me. And today, we're going to talk about the Black Blackhawks offense, what's left of the uh, Blackhawks offense. On the depth chart, as of right now, this is the Blackhawks offense. Andreas Athanasiu, Colin Blackwell, Mackenzie Entwistle, Reese Johnson, Tyler Johnson, Patrick Kane, Boris Kachuk, Juju Hark Kyra, Phil- Philip Kurashev, Sam Lafferty, Tal- Taylor Radish, Brent Sini, Brett Sini, and Tave and uh, Jonathan Taves. So um, we got some guys here. I don't even know who they are. <laughs> yeah, we got some new guys. <laughs> we got some new guys, man. And you know what? Clearly, with the the makeup that we have, I think that they're looking to get a roster of with a couple veterans that are going to bring some dudes along. What do you think, Matt? Yes. Did you say Max Domi? I, I think we, Max Domi isn't there. on here. He's yeah, not, they didn't. Yeah, we forgot about Max Domi. And um, I think that's all we forgot. But I think that they're going to plug in some youngsters from Rockford Yeah, uh, on the offensive side. Hopefully we see a full year of Reichel. That's pretty much my only, I guess, like my only thing I'm excited about with this team. I'm curious, um, you know, how these lines are going to make up and they're going to be so different from kind of our predictions from last year. Um, how do you see um, Andres Anthony see you kind of molding or, or fitting in with this team? Is he like a second line center? Are they going to try and put him on the first line? Is he going to play with Kaner? You know, like what's his, what's his deal? I think Domi will play with Kaner and I kind of like it. Uh, I think, and maybe Anthony CU will be with Taser, maybe. And they're trying to maybe get these guys, like their career back on track, maybe flip them at the deadline. But I've heard Domi really likes Brad Richardson, and maybe he'll want to stay for the long haul. And that, yeah. that's a good sign of a good coach. So yeah. we'll, we'll have to see, man. We got a couple months. Maybe Domi will really like it here. I'm sure he will. I mean, this is probably, well, he's played in Montreal. Chicago is a fun place to play, and I know it's gonna. It sucks when you lose, but I still think the building will be decent crowds, and you know a lot of players like that. I mean, he started off in the desert. You know, there wasn't like anybody there. Now he's gonna have full crowds, and it's, it might be fun for him. So maybe it'll work out. He'll want to stay longer, but maybe the Davidson has plans. You know, and he's gonna want to flip them. Yeah, you know, someone that I've really been thinking about is uh, Sam Lafferty because mm-hmm. I think this guy just has a motor. I think he put in put out a lot last year. Do you think that maybe they're going to give him a look to maybe try to play on maybe in the um, second, third, second, third yeah. line, first Top line six, maybe? maybe. Uh, yeah, I think he is one of the reasons why Davidson felt comfortable trading Hagel because I think they're pretty similar. Yeah. And, you know, Hagel's obviously had a better chance to succeed. Lafferty's kind of been a bottom six guy, but maybe Davidson wants him to be a top six guy and maybe his numbers will like even double. Yeah. So, you know, he's like fast. He does it all. So, especially, you know, Sam Lafferty, I wanted to bring up Taylor Radish too because, um, you know, he's 6'3, 198. He's, on, I, I would say, a bigger guy. And I think that. I think that he fits in with like kind of what like what Lafferty is doing. You know, Lafferty is a physical guy, but Taylor Radish is somewhat physical, but he has a scoring touch. Like I think that he's looking to take another step, maybe take more shots. Where do you see him uh, fitting in in the lineup? I think I see Radish with Taves too, maybe on that top line. Right. Uh, I still think Kaner will be probably that second line, even though he's clearly a top player in the league but sure. i think they want to you know give the team chances to win if they just load up kane and taves it's just not it's not going to be fun for those guys because they're going to be going against the best uh shutdown you know of the other team and you know they won't produce as much but i think if they spread the depth out a little bit maybe you put lafferty with kaner and maybe tyler johnson if he's not dealt i think that'd be a pretty good line to be honest with you, I think Tyler Johnson could kind of be like the wild card here because he plays center very well and he could play winger where he can kind of just be slotted in, you know, if um, they need more of like a top line guy in there kind of or a midline guy. Um, where do you see, do you think Johnson maybe plays on one of those top two lines? 
Oh yeah, he'll be playing top line minutes. I am really surprised he is actually still on the team. I mean, he's got a pretty decent cap hit, and he could play. I know he went through that neck surgery that Eichel went through, so right. maybe there's some uncertainties with other GMs. Maybe they want to kind of play it out and see how he's playing during the season. Uh, and maybe uh, he'll be, you know, traded at the the deadline. But I think he'll be a top six, maybe top three even. I mean, he could even possibly be with Taze on that first line. Mackenzie Entwistle, I think that he had a, a really good year last year. Um, I was like, this isn't really somebody that I think that a lot of people are looking to talk a lot about, but I think that he stepped into that fourth line role, played exactly what you needed him to play, and uh, I, I thought that he played good. Do you think that maybe he moves up to a third line role this year? Uh, I... It's hard, man. There's there's going to be a lot of new guys, young kids c- trying to compete. But I think you got to put him in a role where he's going to like produce for you. If you if they keep him on the fourth line, you know, he's, there's really not high expectations for him. I mean, like five goals, maybe fifteen assists. Like that'd be a good year for him. But you know, maybe everyone's going to get a chance. You know, maybe uh, Brad Richardson's got an idea and he might want him to be like a shutdown type of player. And I think that Isaac Phillips is kind of like him too. Isn't he? Uh, yeah. I, so Hawks got a lot of like tough youngsters, I think like yeah. bottom six guys, which is good. And then you got, you know, you got Lucas Reichel and he's a skilled guy, but I, I, I don't know. I, I don't even know where he'd fit him. Honestly, I think you'd have to put him at second liner with Kane. I, you got to put him with Kane. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, before we move on to Lucas Reichel, I, I want to double down on your statement on saying, you know, the Blackhawks seem like they have some solid bottom six forwards. And these are guys that you really need to round out a team. But they also need some top tier guys and some mid-level guys, which is where I think that we're kind of middling at. And it makes me wonder, you know, obviously th- this team, you know, these guys are going to be looking to compete. As a as a hockey player, how do you look around the room and say, "Hey, you know what? <laughs> These guys aren't a bunch of buttes, but we're gonna go out there, we're gonna give it our all anyway." And what if they're more successful than what they're supposed to be? Uh, I don't know if that will happen, just because the goaltending is it's everything, you know. I mean, I think he wants to he wants to get the best chance to get that Connor Bedard kid. I I think the Hawks will work hard. They'll try hard, but I just think the talent, it, there's just not enough of it. I mean, it's it comes down to goal scoring, and I don't think we're going to have too much of it. But it's going to be, you're going to see a lot of, uh, hopefully we see a lot of hitting with these guys because the Hawks lack that lately. Like grit, that gritty Nashville kind of game where, you know, we can beat you 2-1, to one, three, 3 to 2 but I think the game, there's going to be no blowouts this year with Blackhawks winning. You know, it's going to be, if they win, it's going to be a goalie, a goalie steal or just a complete game where the Hawks played 60 minutes. So it just comes down to talent for me. I don't, I hope that, you know, they finish decent and not like completely, you know, like embarrassed, like Owen 82, but. You know, hopefully they can get at least 30 wins, you know, maybe 25. (laughs) So Lucas Reichel, I think that's what everybody wants to see. I hope he's ready. Um, With with this kid coming in, you know, he's kind of like the, how do you say, the um, kind of like the leader of the, uh, of like the, yeah, Yeah. of like the next wave of, of young talent coming into the Blackhawks. With with him coming in, how much competition do you think that they're going to have between some of these veterans and some of these younger guys? Because they're going to want some of these younger guys getting in there and getting time. You know, how do you think that they're going to work that out with some of these other guys on the team? I don't think there's any competition for Reichel. I think this year is for him. Go out there, play 82, learn learn from Kaner if, if he's here. I think that right. is the best mentor right for him if he's he's got the skill we've seen his clips in the ahl i've seen three or four games this year when he when they were playing the wolves this year he clearly was the best player out there it's like god he's too good for this league but you know when they called him up 
it's kind of a different world for him. So he, sure. he's got to learn. But I th- even, even Taves, he's a center. Learn from this guy. Sit with him all year. As long as he's here, you watch him. You eat dinner with him. You travel on the road with him. You learn it. So I, I think if... I, I hate to do the Kirby Doc thing, put him at the third line center, because now you're playing against really good guys, and you can get yeah. really embarrassed easily. Right. I would say second line center to be safe right. with maybe Kane and Tyler Johnson. I thought you give, were thinking Kane or in uh, Max Domi. Yeah. I think but, you'd want to put him on a line with Max Domi so that you can I, have yeah. somebody to kind of police people that, up. That's a good point. That's a good point. And maybe put Tyler Johnson with Taves and Tyler Radish or something. That's not bad. You know, or Anthony to see. <laughs> I can't. Anthony, Anthony to see. God, God bless you. <laughs> and Anthony somebody C. like that. The Hawks, they got some decent young players. They really do. But... um I like your idea of Domi being out there, you know, just being the sheriff for Kaner and Taves. Like, no, you're not. Or I'm sorry, uh, uh, Reichel and Kane. I yeah. think that that that's a, actually a great line if you think about it. You got the the elite Hall of Fame playmaker. You got the up and coming, you know, playmaker shooter. And then you just got that gritty dude who will She's just a punch in. punch your face <laughs> in if you look at him funny or. But he could score. There, yeah. he, Max Domi's had some pretty solid numbers over the years. So yeah, yeah he, he gets penalty miss, and he's not afraid of anybody. I like that. And he's yeah. like five two, you know. So I think that I think that would be a great line. And you know, maybe like I said, maybe Domi will enjoy it so much he's gonna want to stay. Yeah, he, he's like that type of guy. He's like a fan favorite wherever he goes. People yeah. love that. That you know that work ethic, the hitting, he'll fight you. They, people love that. Yeah, he's definitely like kind of like a, you know, I, I want to say like an Andrew Shaw type of player. Yep, you for know, sure. Probably more skilled, but uh, definitely an, an Andrew Shaw type of player. A guy that the, a guy that the the town can can kind of rally against. You know what blue, I mean? The, blue collar, the blue collar type of guy. Type of yeah. guy yeah. yeah, yeah. That's I think that's a good way of putting. It. So yeah, let's call it right now. That second line is going to be um, Reichel. Kaner on the right wing and Max Domi on the left wing. Uh, most notably, at uh, Fifth Third Arena, uh, Kaner, uh, K- not Kaner, uh, Max Domi was there. Uh, you know, he came in and he shook up with Jonathan Taves. Looked like Jonathan Taves was putting in some work on the ice with uh, with Connor Murphy. Now we know Connor Murphy finished the season in in concussion protocol, so it looks like he's kind of you know coming along and. Um, and he was working with, with Johnny. So Johnny seemed to welcome, you know, Domi. It was the first time he's he's seen him. Um, to be honest with you, he kind of looked a little like, oh, it's this guy, <laughs> you know, t- type of <laughs> yeah. a thing. But, you yeah. know, he came up and shook his hand and, you know, they were talking. So that's pretty cool to see. Um, so, yeah, we'll see, man. I- I'm really curious to see how Domi fits in on this team. Um, I think that he's... Um, I think that he's kind of a wild card for this team, so we'll have to we'll have to see how it goes. Yeah, we're definitely going to be better than Phoenix, I think. But uh, Davidson want he wants us to be worse. Obviously, he wants his better percentage of getting that first round pick. But uh, you never know, man. It's just it's not a it's not a good enough guarantee. You know, even if you finish last, it, look, look at Phoenix the last couple of years. They they haven't gotten the first pick. It was New Jersey, and then it was, I believe, Montreal this year, right? Yeah. I think Montreal went first. So I, I, I think they should bring it back to the old way. You finish dead last, you you get the first round pick. But that's their, this is the anti you can't tank rule type of thing, the unofficial rule. The uh, They do the lottery. So, you know, I, I don't know. I, I think they. I'd go back to that because some teams have been in the basement way too long. Phoenix, I think we're going to be in there for a couple seasons. New Jersey hasn't been good. And I mean, look how long it wasn't Florida in that position before Dale Talon. It was yeah. almost like a joke. Yeah. So it's like, you, so you was need Carolina. A, Car- yeah. You need a guy to like, like Kane and Taves did for us. And uh, what was that? Oh, Oh six and Oh seven. We got, or Oh seven, Oh eight, whatever. But, we we got two guys that just turned the franchise around, and then Dale Talon put a good core around him, and the rest was history. Ten cup or three cups, ten cups—that'd be amazing. But huh. three cups, and 
We, you just need that game changer, and maybe the Hawks can find one these next couple seasons. Yeah, especially, you know, obviously we've got a couple good draft picks. I'd like to see how these guys pan out in a couple years. And, um, you know, with, you know, possibly uh, Lucas Reichel leading the way, I mean, I mean it could be, yeah. um, I mean, we could have some good times going going for us. You know, Detroit is, is as of last year, I think they were probably a year or year or two ahead of schedule. And now they're looking to to make a push this year. <clears throat> I'm predicting next year they're going to be a tough team to play against. As of right now, I think that they're, they're going to be a tough team to play against. I think next year uh, they could be playing for a playoff spot, if not this year. Yeah, I think their division's very tough. It is. And even they, they did get better, but the rest of the division got better. I have a prediction, and you may not like it. I think that Detroit, will be the team to make the biggest push for Jonathan Taves at the so? deadline if he's available. Yes, Stevie Y loves oh, him. Oh, yeah. And they need that, you know, that, that third line maybe, second line center just to get him over the hump. They got Dylan Lark in the first line stud yeah. there. Then you get an ultimate leader in Taves. I could really see that happening, and that would be – <laughs> like the old school Blackhawk fan would be like, you got to be kidding me. But, you know, the new school, it, that would be ridiculous. But I can really see that happening because it makes sense. He'd be a great player to have on a team that's looking to make the playoffs. You know, like even look at Toronto. He would be a guy that could. They just can't afford it. No, no, they wouldn't yeah. be able to afford it. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm just using them as an example, you know, yes. as a team looking to, to, to get ahead. You know, Edmonton, you know, another team looking to get ahead. He could be that. Not just that he could be that leadership to kind of take some of the the weight off of McDavid's back, uh, but they still have some defensive questions over there, so it wouldn't be the all and all type of a thing. But he would be he could be a big piece on a team that's looking to uh, make a big push. Even yeah. Carolina, yeah, I think Carolina could, but I for some reason I just get the vibes if he doesn't retire, he's going to end up in Detroit, if wow. not Winnipeg, his hometown. But Detroit is like it makes more sense. It, they're close. They got a good young core, great GM. And if I feel like Stevie Y signs two good free agents, like steals too, like right. cheap steals, and they're they're gonna be good. And if they can get Taves to be that, you know, like that John Madden signing for us in 2010, I think they could make some noise for sure. Do you think that? Oh, well, I'm gonna say I think Taves resigns with the Blackhawks. And really, I, uh, I, I think just... I, I think that he'll sign a two year deal. Um, I think that I like it. I think but I don't that see he's it. a um, you know, obviously, this is just me, you know, kind of spitballing it here. Um, I think that you know, I think that he's been telling himself, we're going to get back in there, we're going to start winning some cups again, you know, like I think that's where his mindset was beforehand. I think with all the moves, everything going on, he's had to face the cold, hard reality of look, we're not going to be winning a Stanley Cup this year. And mm. he needs to start loving to play hockey for playing hockey for what it is. And considering, you know, the, you know, the sickness that he had, that, that immune disorder that he had, I think that he's going to be, um, he's going to maybe find some new life in him where he's like, you know what, we got these young guys here. Um, I, you know, I can help lead these guys to a new time, have somebody else take over. You know, him and Kane, you know, it's kind of like a full circle moment for uh, uh, for these guys. I yeah. think that he sticks around, maybe, maybe uh, for like a one or two year contract. That, that one or two year great. contract at $6.5 million. Like we talked about before, I think, you know, if he creates a good bond with Lucas Reichel, like this net, your next top line center type kid. Yeah, and they form a strong friendship. Like, hey, I want to help this kid because when Taves was coming up, it was Marty Lapointe. Right, we had Marty Lapointe for like two, three seasons, and he really took Taves under his wing. And Taves doesn't talk about him much, but I remember like that guy. He was a good leader. He was a very good underrated player too. Marty yeah, Lapointe. He, he played for Detroit those years. Well, and, that's why. <laughs> yeah, he played for Boston, I believe, and he was good. But uh, they took him in, and you know, he kind of. He learned fast, he, but that those I think his first year when he was a rookie, he had Savard as his coach, which you know he's was a great player. He had some really good role type of player. I think Adrian Acoin was the captain before Taves, 
if you remember him. He was pretty yeah, brutal. I think but, it was Marty Lapointe, and then it was yeah uh, Adrian uh, Aquin for Point. a season, and then it was Taves. Yeah. And I feel like that you know he those those older guys really took him in. They showed him the ropes. Even Seabrook was good to him. He was kind of like that other captain behind the scenes type of guy that right he before Taves Seabrook was supposed to be the next captain right for sure even Brent Sobel took him in so maybe he'll he'll you know he'll feel like you know what it's my turn now I people took care of me I I got to do my job for this franchise but and, and that that's that's I could see him resigning for a reason like that but if he still wants to go after that one more cup one more cup run or whatever I could see him going to Detroit because I think they're going to have space. And I think, you know, obviously Stevie Y is always, you know, they've been, those two have been compared to each other all the time. And Stevie Y, I think, picked the Canadian team before uh, Taves played with the Hawks. I think he was like 19 years old and he, he wanted him to play in that World Cup. And he's always had a good, strong bond with Taves. So I just get that feeling, man. But I... <sighs> I'd be okay with him staying for two years, but not at ten million. I would more like you know six or seven, maybe yeah. two years, seven million, because the 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 salary cap is not going to hurt us at no, all. No, it's not. So you could pay him just to please him, like make it worth you know make it worth yeah. him coming out. Like here, here's an extra mil, just bear with us, you know, type of thing. But I, I think he signs for two years, six point five. Kaner eight. Kaner eight for three or two. For about maybe two or three, yeah. I'll, I'll go yeah. a minimum two years. Yeah, I don't know, man. I think Kane will Kaner's got him. more time left in him, though, than Taves does. Yeah, Kaner's been pretty healthy, knock on wood. I mean, he, he's had like one or two ankle injuries and stuff, but never any hits to the noggin or anything. But he'll... He'll bring in he'll bring in a lot of you know draft capital and maybe a prospect, but I, I would love to see Kane and Taves both retire as Hawks for sure. Now I'm talking I mean, with my heart here, you know. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'd love to see him retire, and you know, the next season they both have their retirement jerseys or their banners retired the next year together because they yeah. came in together. I think that'd be pretty cool. Maybe a couple years down the line, hey, we got a statue. You know, on the other side of, you know, Madison, like, you know, you got Makita Hall. Why don't you put Kane and Tave's statue up now? You I mean, know I what think that'd be do, pretty man. cool. Have you ever been to a Bush Stadium? Bush Stadium, is that where the Cardinals play? Yeah. No. They've got a thing there with like a bunch of players, like a, like a, like a bronze statue, man. They, they should do like a, like a statue with like all of the guys who won cups for them on the outside through like those that five year run, you know? Like the core guys. Yeah. Like the three the three timers. Yeah. Yeah. They should have a they should have a statue with those dudes. And then under that, like on the base, have a plaque for every single guy who was on the, who was on those teams. Um because they should. should all be recognized for yeah. their for their contributions too. Because you know, are are you gonna make a statue for Taves? Yes, absolutely. Are you gonna make a statue for Kane? Absolutely. Are you going to make Keith. one for uh, Jarmelson? You he know? should. I think that he should be he should be recognized on there, and I think that they should have like a like a big kind of thing with everybody who won three cups during that time and a plaque and like a like a little placard underneath with the guy's name number. Yeah, who, who was on who was a um, who was on those teams? I think that would be awesome. It would be a great way of of recognizing those guys. I have no disrespect for Hosa, but do you? This is tough. He's getting his number retired. For absolutely incredible player, best free agent signing the Hawks have ever had. Maybe even Chicago sports. But do you think his number should be retired before Keith Seabrook or Jarmelson? I don't. I'll I'll say this: they weren't winning cups before him. Yeah, and but he, he came in when they all started winning together. He was that he was that one thing that they needed that the team needed to to uh, to win. And I, mean, I, I think that he's deserving of of his number retirement for what he did for the I, organization. I do too, but I know Keith was still playing. You can't retire his jersey if right. he's still playing. I understand that. Seabrook's still under contract <laughs> with Tampa Bay. <laughs> <laughs> but Jarmelson, yeah, I thought maybe Jarmelson should have been retired. Absolutely, and 
I mean, Patrick I th- Sharp. I think Kyle Davidson needs to have a tough conversation with Seth Jones and tell him, "Hey, look, you're going to be the, <laughs> you're going to be a, you know, you're uh, recognized uh, as a, a leader and a big part of this team, but you can't wear this number, man. I'm sorry." You can't. Uh, that's one thing I never understood with the Hawks. Uh, I tell over the I'd years. be like, hey, man, yeah. look, look at this guy's numbers. Look at his stats and look at what he did for this fucking team. You can't yeah. sit here and tell me that you're more deserving of wearing this number than he is. Well, that's the thing I like about the Cubs. I know a couple of years back, uh, Kerry Wood got traded, maybe, or he retired. And Derek Lee was on the team, and he said... No, you, no one gets this locker. This is Kerry Woods' locker, and no one wears his number. Right. And I always thought that was really cool. Yeah. But that's something that needs to be done in the locker room. That's like a t- Kane and Taves thing. Like, hey, hey buddy. Yeah, you are not wearing number 10. You are not wearing number 81. You are not wearing 50 as a goalie or whatever. You're not wearing those numbers. And You're over not the, wearing like, 15 because that yeah. was Jim Cummins' number. Jim Cummins will be pissed, <laughs> and Tuomo Rutu will be very upset. <laughs> And honestly, like that's something the Hawks lacked over the last couple decades. Like they, there was there, there was no respect, and it's like Steve Larmer, twenty eight. Yeah. No, Mark Bell, you are not wearing that fucking number. Yeah. This guy, Larmer, should have his number retired. Yeah. I mean, I am pro Jeremy Roenick getting his number retired because a fifty goal guy back to back. He was a character. Unbelievable player. I mean, I cried when he was traded third grade. I was so upset. I know I love Eddie Belfour, but it, I mean, he he could have his number retired, but he won't. He never, you know, they never won the cup. But he he was a Calder. I think he was a two time Vesna back to back once a two year run maybe. He was a Calder. He was a heart MVP too. He was awesome with the Blackhawks. But I, I, if I have to say jersey retirements, you Duncan Keith next year right away, and you should announce it this year. Like, hey, Dunks, your number's getting retired a certain night at Seabrook. Uh, you have to give it to Sharpie. You have to give it to Jermelson. And I really, would, Sharp if, should get his re- number retired? I think Sharp was a big part of it, man. I think and he was. I'm I don't a Tony think, Amani guy, I number don't think 10. That he's, uh, I don't think he's a jersey retirement guy, though. I think Sharpie, man, he's he's not going to get a lot of love, but he was huge. He in the was playoffs. absolutely. And he was a good, good piece. That top six guy, and he was he was there for three of them, man. Yeah, I, I mean, he was there. Yeah. He was a big part of it. The last year, maybe he didn't score as much, but when he did score, it was a big goal. Yeah, and we got him. He was here through the bad years, just like Kane and Taves. Yeah, he, he was. was. Him yeah. and Keith were like the longest like tenured hawks yeah. before it, you know, and he he was here through the 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 bad, and then he was here for the good, and he went to Dallas. He came. He, he's like, I this sucked. He came back and retired as a hawk. Yeah, I I totally agree that he should be that um, Keith should have his number retired and Seabrook. I don't think it should be a Seabrook slash Chelios. I think it should be a Seabrook absolutely number retirement. Yep. He, Chelly, very good defenseman. I will not take that away from him. He was unbelievable, gritty. He could do it all. But hey, man, you left. You know, you 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 got traded. You spent more time in Detroit. Seabrook spent his whole career with the Blackhawks. Three Stanley Cups, big big overtime goals. Yeah, he he is the number big seven he of got the Blackhawks. Taser back on the uh, his head straight yeah. that in that Detroit series. He, yeah, he wore the A almost the whole time in those runs. I think he did, him and Keith, right? Yeah, yeah, they did. Sharp oh, no, wore it was a couple. Sharp and, sharp yeah. and Keith for a long yeah. time. And then when Sharp left, they gave it to, uh, gave it to uh, Seabrooks. I love, I love Sharpie, but number 10 will always be Imani to me. Yeah, but me Sharpie does deserve to get his number retired, no doubt about it. And, you know, Ronick, it's, it's maybe 50 50 with fans. I know a lot of fans don't like him, but a lot of fans do like him. Yeah, he was a good Blackhawk, man. I think Tony Amani was even better Blackhawk than Ronick. And yeah, he was. That was an absolute steal of a trade by, oh, by Pulford. Stefan Mateau and Brian Noonan. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That was an absolute steal. And I, like I said, I watched that New York 1994 Stanley Cup, uh, Stanley Cup video, and 
Mike Keenan pretty much ran Amani out of town. And I all the fans were like, dude, this is our future. This kid's scoring 30 his first year. Mike Keenan absolutely hated him. He thought he was a rich prick from Boston, that his dad took care of him and paid his way in. And that wasn't the case at all. Amani even said, like, hey, my dad didn't even give me a quarter to get a freaking gumball back in the day. He's like, my dad worked his ass off for me to play. And and he said he got a call from JR the night before. Hey, hey, Tony, I got number 10 reserve for you. I'll see you tomorrow. And he hung up the phone on him. And, and Tony in that Boston, what the hell was that all about, you know? And uh, and the rest was history. The next day he was traded to the Hawks. And what a freaking steal of a trade, man. Wow. Yeah, I'm, I'm really, I think that Jeremy Roenick was, was a, a big part of the organization. A lot of people loved him. A lot of people hated the Blackhawks after they traded him. I think his numbers des- deservedly should be retired, man. We got to do a dedicated pod to this. This is crazy. <laughs> to, ju- to Jersey retirements? Just Jersey retirements, yeah. Okay. Well, it's, it's good. Lastly, I wanted to mention was that Derek Plant was uh, is filling out the rest of the uh, the coaching staff. He is the last assistant to be hired by Luke Richardson. Uh, how do you feel about that, man? Was he the guy that left the college team? Uh, I believe so. Yes. Yeah. But I mean, obviously this guy knows what he's doing, man. He's a, he's a lot. I know Montreal was very upset when he left. They wanted him to kind of stay in just in case Marty St. Louis didn't work out. But I mean, you got to trust him at this point. He obviously liked what he saw and he's bringing him in. So I'm on board with it. I'm actually happy Derek King is an assistant coach. I think me and you yeah. talked about this, like, hey, he'd make a perfect assistant coach. Right. And I think he's going to do a good job, actually. He's familiar with the players. Yeah. So it's so the players aren't seeing, you know, like new coach, the uh, whole bunch of new coaches. That's kind of like, uh, you know, getting water thrown in your face a little bit. You know, they see a familiar face on the on the bench and, you know, yeah. someone that they, I would say, ultimately respect because, you know, he was he was out there with them while, you know, they were getting their teeth kicked yeah. in. Like, like you need that big brother type of coach, you know, the one that goofs around and he's funny as hell. You know, his press conferences were good. He's just a normal dude. You know, he's like, I'm going to go have a beer after this game. Sure. It was my first game. I'm going to settle down. And you need a guy like that. Then you need, you know, the serious guy like Richardson. He looks very serious. And, you know, I, I yeah, like he that. Does. <laughs> and he, he's got that, that chiseled jawline. He's, <laughs> I think, can cut through Mount Everest. So. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, don't that, bring that's a bad a really... report card home to dad. Bro, don't yeah, <laughs> you better back back check, boys. That guy's gonna he he looks like he can brawl too. Yeah, he looks he in does, good shape. Man. So yeah, I, I think I'm really really happy with that move. I think that he's gonna be good for this young you know young next wave coming up. And hey, maybe it'll work out so well they're gonna keep him and we'll have him through the playoff runs once we get there. Like, like you know, like we mentioned before, Taves might be like, hey man, this is what we need here. You know. Yeah, yeah, you almost need a like a hybrid type of torts, you know, a guy who will won't say it on TV and Mr. Tough Guy, but he'll be a tough guy. Sure. Know? Yeah, I think yeah, I think you're gonna get that with him. More serious, and he's gonna expect you to you know play your hardest every shift, and he'll call you out if you don't. Next week, everybody, we're gonna be doing def- uh, we're gonna do wingers. Oh, we did offense today. We're gonna do defensemen next week. And we could really get into it because Luke Richardson, Luke Richardson was a defenseman, and I'm sure that he'll have a a yeah. big say. Thousand what's, games, right? Uh, I thought it was like 1,400 or something like that. Jeez, yeah, that's a lot for a defenseman. Yeah, so uh, that's what we got for you tonight. Next week, defenseman. If you have anything that you want to say, want us to bring up about defenseman, get us on Twitter. Join us. We you know we've we've been doing what are those up uh, Twitter Spaces the past couple of weeks. Yeah. Good conversations. Been a lot of fun. Uh, jump on there. We usually do that. What is that? Thursday night? Yeah, maybe we can do the Jersey re- retirement thing on that or something. We'll all get right. some fans in there and we can talk all about it. Yeah, it sounds good. All right. Yeah. So Thursday, 7 30, we'll do a we'll do a uh Jersey retirement Twitter space if you want to jump on with us. It's fun. Everybody gets an opportunity to speak and uh we keep it civil. So jump on with us, follow us, Shy Tomahawk. And uh, thanks for listening, guys. We appreciate it. This is the Tomahawk, and we're out of here.